Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Liberty Challenge. And today we have Ice Age Continental Drift. This is one in a long line of, of film, feature film sequels. I don't think any of them went directly to video that I can remember. I think they all went to theaters, uh, and good or bad, they went to theaters. Uh, and they also, there's also specials, and like they had an East Eggs spectacular like an easter themed one um they, they've done a bunch of different things now disney plus is an original series featuring uh simon's pegs buck wild uh so yeah there's there's all sorts of little spin-offs and things like that but it's the main films that of course are the centerpiece of all of this it's been going on since 2002 i think and this is from 2012 a 10-year anniversary of the original uh this is like the fourth one, I think. Three or four, I'm not really sure. Uh, this is an hour and 33 minutes long, and it uh, brings together uh, Manny, D Manny, Diego, uh, Sid, all, once, once again, the the woolly mammoth, the saber-toothed tiger, and the... What is Sid? He's a... Why can't I think of what he is? He's just like a weasel-looking thing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, Ray Romano... Uh, Dennis Leary and Je Je uh, John Leguizamo, uh, along with Queen Latifah as Ellie, uh, who's uh, who uh, Manny has met and married and had a child with in previous films, uh, uh, played by uh, Queen Latifah, plays Ellie. She thinks she's. By the way, if, if you're if you're somehow you're skipping around li like I have been due to this thing, and I've never watched this before, uh, I kind of forgot that Ellie when he first met Ellie, she thought she was a possum. She was, like, raised by possums, so she would hang upside down in trees, even though she's a woolly mammoth who weighs many tons. And they pass that on to her daughter, where they kind of still believe that they're half possum. Maybe that's what... No, okay. It doesn't matter. Possum. Those are different characters. Uh, speaking of characters, there are a ton of name actors in this. They, I think they just... 20th Century Fox just shelled out the bucks and said, hey, who is popular at this moment in music and... Uh, just especially music there are a ton of pop stars in this everybody from jennifer lopez to drake of course queen latifah like i said Nicki Nicki minaj is in this uh, man there's just there's a bunch there's a bunch uh, even uh, characters like uh nick frost who hey, hey look i'll show you uh, nick frost from uh <laughs> from uh Shaun of the dead uh he played he was, uh, he was, he played, he plays a very blubbery, like, walrus or sea lion. He's a sea lion, I think, in this. Dumb as dirt, but, you know, he's playing the, the big tubby guy again for whatever reason. Uh, but he, he's good at it. So, hey, you know, it's good to see Nick Frost, because, I mean, considering that Simon Pegg, his longtime acting partner in Spaced and all the Edgar Wright films is also in this series as well. He is, Simon is credited in this, but I don't remember seeing Buck in this for whatever reason. Uh, also, by the way, yeah, speaking of other nerdy uh, actors, Patrick Stewart shows up in this at some point, and I will not tell you, it's a very sh sh brief cameo, honestly, just a handful of lines, um, but it's kind of, it's a funny, funny uh, reference, uh, well, reference. It's a, it's a very funny moment. So, uh, yeah, Patrick Stewart shows up in this. Um, <clears throat> other people like Aziz Ansari, you know him from Parks and Recreation, uh, Joy Behar. Good grief! Oh, and the bad guy, the bad guy, uh, Captain uh, Captain Gut. By the way, two days, two two, uh, two days in a row, we have pirate themed films. You notice these guys are all pirates looking guys. The captain. Gut is Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones, uh, Tyrion Lannister. So yeah, he, he, and he's done a ton of other things, but he's most mostly known for Tyrion Lannister. It's one he's won all the awards for. So uh, yeah, I mean pop stars, uh, classic nerd culture stars. Uh, oh, Josh Gad before he was Olaf in Frozen, he plays a mole rat who has a crush on. Manny's daughter Peaches they're best friends but yeah he's strangely enough he doesn't get a big singing thing he doesn't get a big singing moment in this this is all mostly just pop R&B stars that 
dominate this because there's a big moment song at the end during the credits about family and that's what the film's all really about it's about the family you have uh, that you're born with and also the family that you choose when your family that you are born with isn't all that great and they treat you like garbage which we learn uh sid has one of those and he's given uh Against his will, he's given Granny to take care of, played by Wanda Sykes. So, yeah, there's... I can keep going on and on and on about all the different actors in this. I know I'm going to miss some of them. So many. Uh, Kamal Nayar uh, from Big Bang Theory. Good grief. Good... Yeah, yeah. Sean William Scott as, as Crash. Josh Peck. Good grief, Alan Tudyk, of course, has to show up because he has a voice and he uses it in just about every animated film that exists. So, yeah, he's in Resident Alien right now, I think on sci-fi, something like that. I, I love the show, I just don't, not really clear on where I'm getting it from uh, half the time. Streaming! Anyway, uh, this is a big pirate adventure. Uh, and, of course, the story begins and ends with Sprat, who is the little rat thing that is just trying to get a nut. He's just trying to get that acorn. And uh, what he does in the process of trying to get that acorn is he is the cause for the continental drift. One, at one time, way back in Earth's history, all the different continents were one large landmass, apparently, uh, called Pangaea, or at least that's what we call it. Nobody called it that back then because there were no humans to create language and uh, name things, as far as we know. So, yeah, I'm not going to create a conspiracy theory on that at all. Um, <laughs> they, it was Pangaea, it all broke up eventually over many millions, possibly billions of years, uh, not at the speed in which this all seems to happen in this film, because it's a ticking clock kind of story where after Scrat does something extraordinary to suddenly break apart the continents and start having the plate sh plates shift and crash over each other. Well, it causes huge chasms between Manny and his family. Like, the boys end up on one thing with Granny, and Manny's family end up on another, and they're separated, and they have to get back to each other. And that's the whole point of the film. But along the way, they run into some pirates led by Peter Dinklage and a crazy crew of other animals that I'm not really sure what their whole point is other than to acquire more crew to get more bounty. So, yeah, it's to get more food, but be cruel about it and cool uh, at the same time. Because, I mean, he, Peter Dinklage makes a very fun, uh, just very evil-looking uh, monkey orangutan uh, kind of uh, creature. And, uh, yeah, there's lots of big comedy moments, obviously, because this is a comedy. Uh, but, yeah, it's also got the family and longing and, you know, under, you know that kind of stuff. Uh, but, yeah, most of the laughs uh, come from, from uh, the gang just sort of interacting uh, with each other, amongst each other, in the face of humongous danger. And there is, a, like I said, there's a ticking clock because everybody else who's on this one piece of land is sort of has this wall of land moving behind it at a certain speed and they have to keep out of its way until they can get to a, a location which they can hopefully escape it where Manny and the rest hope to meet them at some point. Will that happen? Well, you tell me. Have you seen a movie ever that's for kids that has a goal in mind and sets up things in a certain way? There's, this is not a this is not a movie from the 70s where everything was kind of grim and dark and we're reeling from Watergate in Vietnam. So no, this is not <laughs> this is not Midnight Cowboy. So yeah, this is you're, it's going to end the way you expect. Although, like I said, it begins and ends with Scrat and Scrat. His storyline does turn in a very interesting way. He is his own worst enemy, in very in a big way. So. Yeah, it's he's he's more like the C story of this whole thing, but everything exists is happening because of him. So that's that's kind of neat. If you haven't seen this one, yeah, you know what? I mean, if you've already if you already loved all the other Ice Ages, I I like this one pretty much. Yeah, I like this one again mostly because of the talent that's in this. Uh, they do have like one or two songs in this. It's weird to think that that there's a moment where Peter Dinklage has a has a sings with Jennifer Lopez. It's just 
that's kind of cool, I guess. You know, that's that's kind of neat. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a fun a fun uh, big adventure. I can't imagine that we're gonna get a third uh, pirate story, but we could right after this. Oh, the other thing about this, it's 2012, and everything that's hitting theaters around this time is 3D, especially animated films like this, and they animate to make use of that 3D element. So you're going to see a bunch of moments where things are, there's a lot of forced perspective, and there's things coming at you in a sense, not not gratuitously, but things that move into frame and, and out that, and there's and there's moments where you're put in the position of the character and things are moving around you. So it makes it, really takes advantage of the 3D element uh, that uh, it would be projected in if this was in 3D here, but it's not. Still doesn't take away from the uh, adventure aspect, the action, but it's, yeah, it's a little, <laughs> it's, you can see the moments that they chose to go, hey, let's make this more 3D, you know, so it's kind of funny. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, check it out. I mean, honestly, if you're tired of all these things, this one's not going to change your mind, probably. But, yeah, it's a continuing saga of the uh, Ice Age gang. And uh, I don't know if they're even in the Ice Age anymore. So they've broken pretty much all the rules. There's This is not a nature documentary, so let's be clear. It's, it's not going <laughs> to stick to... Uh, the, the historic n natural evolution of the planet or it's the animals that live, live on it. So, yeah. But it's still fun. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 242. 242. Do not scroll far. 242. <laughs> okay. Dang, it's another movie. It's a busy, it's a busy hot weekend. And by the way, I gotta in order to keep a lot of the sound out of this thing, I don't have air conditioning, so <laughs> I gotta I gotta close the windows. And it's really hot, but maybe this will cool me off because it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, and guess what? It's a sequel to a classic. Come on, Arnold, it's jingle all the way too. Although I have a feeling I don't think Arnold Schwarzenegger is in this one. I don't recall. And by the way, this could have been taken off as well. I, every once in a while, they take things off of Disney Plus to put them back on during this the season. So maybe this do this is do this being outside of the season. It's been taken off. If that's the case, I'll be back in a second, and we'll pick another number. But for now, we're watching Jingle All the Way Two. I'm gonna have to wear the hat on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.